Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Honor. It is turn 11 of the Flegger multiplayer game, and things are proceeding pretty well. We didn't find any magic sites, unfortunately. Uh, we took over Sinefi with the loss of only three of our Helot Warriors, and we took over Ashington with the loss of six Helot Warriors, which is fine. I mean, for over 30 cavalry, that's fine. Uh, we did lose a little bit of dominion and resources in the Caverns of Gnek, but you know what, who cares? So, expansion-wise, we are moving in this direction. Now, Marignon, apparently, has gone AI. If we look at the Pretenders, we will notice uh, Richard Milhouse Nixon is now an AI. So, on the one hand, that's kind of cool because it gives me territory over here. On the other hand, it's bad because AIs are unpredictable. And this AI, apparently, according to somebody who apparently has a vision over here, has just been massing huge quantities of troops. So there's that. But uh, we're going to we're going to expand into Marignon's cap circle, which often does antagonize the AI. But we've got a pretty solid little force here, um, and I think we can handle it. I think we can deal. Uh, these helots have crap morale. But that's fine as long as they have the giants backing them up. We have gotten a couple of uh, scout recruitment provinces. This province can recruit scouts. This province can recruit scouts. So we are also still recruiting Bakemono chiefs, which have the benefit of being scouts and having 40 leadership. So they can lead troops, and we can just kind of shuttle them around to uh, pass troops back and forth. Our fortress here will be completed next turn. I'm also building a temple. I'm moving one of my sages down to build a lab. It will take him two turns to get there. So we won't be able to start recruiting mages just yet. We have started recruiting mages up here, however. Hippolytus, of course, searched and found no magic sites, which is unfortunate, but not entirely unexpected. So our research recruitment capacity is expected to double very shortly. We are finishing up a recruitment of a third tyrant, and we're recruiting a Trophimos commander over here, because we've got archers and we've got this guy, Hippolytus, capturing slaves. So we're gonna take probably one more turn, and then we're gonna go in to take this province. Uh, it looks like Pythium is not expanding towards it very aggressively right at the moment, which is great. Uh, there's Pythium, speaking of them. So we're going to take this province in a couple of turns as well. Minion in Chief is going to build his temple. He'll get one more turn of recruitment to bulk up his infantry forces, and then he'll go in down here. I think he'll do fine. And, of course, over here we're expanding into Marignan, moving our troops in this direction. Uh, if you recall, Facey and I had a conversation in which the presence of underwater independence was brought up. He was accusing me, basically, of wanting to grab underwater independence from these provinces in order to set up to attack him. Um, which wouldn't be very smart, to be honest. And also, there's no underwater independence here. We talked about that last turn. There's zero. There are actually in underwater independence up here. There's a turtle village which enables the recruitment of turtle warriors. Turtle warriors are mermen but with armor, so they're actually significantly superior to just bog standard mermen. They do require resources. This province actually has quite a few resources, and the provinces that surround it could feed it more, so I could fort this province and start recruiting turtle warriors. Um, which might be a good idea at some point, because this province will be free, basically. It would just be a little bit of free money. And having the capacity to go into this lake might be useful. Um, Phasia cannot actually easily go into water, because they don't have any amphibious troops. They do have water magic, so they can summon things, but it's not particularly better than mine. Uh, it's more common, but it's not higher level. So... Competing for the lake at some point may be a good idea. Not going to do it right now, though. This is all kelp forest down here, interestingly. So that's going to be the turn. Building our fortresses here and here. This will be finished next turn. This will be finished in two turns' time. And we're building a temple, and next turn we'll build a lab here. So we'll have the lab done just as the fort finishes. So with that, we will be able to start spamming out uh, shamans, the lizard shamans, to give us astral and nature. And we will proceed from there. Uh, I feel good about where we are. We have quite a few provinces. Our expansion is steady, albeit not incredibly fast. Uh, we have uh, two forts already and two more to be completed by early spring. 
well, by spring we'll have four forts, which is a very solid place to be at that point in the game. And we'll have the income to continue building more forts, so we can build a fort here in Avoca. Um, we might be able to consider taking over Mernion, because as AI they won't defend themselves very well, and if we were to besiege that fortress we could kind of lock them down, prevent them from recruiting anything more. It's a possibility. We would have to build up significantly more forces in order to do so. So we'd need our third tyrant over in this over here, somewhere in this area, pumping out troops for us. This province, um, I would rather I would rather fort this province because it has better recruitment points, to be honest. So this is probably where I would place a fort if I was going to place a fort over here. So uh, with that, I'm moving. I'm in a bit of a rush right now. Um, I tried to. The reason I've been offline was because I tried to uh, construct a new computer and it failed. I, some of my parts were not functional or didn't function with each other. So back to the drawing board, had to put my old computer back together. And uh, we'll see where we go. I may have to buy a pre-build unless I can figure out how to make my parts work. So in any case, that's irrelevant. Right now, uh, we're just concerned with the expansion of Flegra, the Great and Powerful. So I will see you in turn 12. All right, on our turn 12, let's just keep rolling right along. In messages this turn, uh, Arcosophale anointed a new prophet for the Socrates, god of this world. Uh, battle in Tiffia, we wiped them out. Very, very few independents here. It looks like probably the AI actually attacked this province, or possibly the player did before he went AI and lost, because you don't see provinces spawned with six units very often, if ever. A couple of random events, some unrest and misfortune in Cerny, eh, who cares. And in Nam, we got a couple of gems, which is always nice. We also completed our fortress in Shepherds's Haven. We are upgrading it to a giant fortress, and we are upgrading Nam here, uh, which will be done in one more turn. Nam is currently starting to recruit a Trophimos Sage and also a turn's worth of archers. With that turn's worth of archers plus the extra infantry we're going to spawn, we will move into Abi and claim it for the Free Democratic People's Republic of Flegra down here. Uh, Yalmanos is moving down this way to build a lab so that we can start to recruit mages here in Shepherds' Haven as well. Actually, tell you what, I'm going to have him search for magic sites on his way. I don't know if air magic sites spawn in caves, but I feel like it's worth trying. Up here, uh, I've renamed a couple of our flagrant tyrants to more suitably reflect their dignity. We have Idiocrates and Aristotle here. I'll rename this guy when I get a chance. Uh, we are recruiting another Trophimos Sage because I feel like I need more magic and more research. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to recruit a Cyclops Shepherd Shaman instead. And instead of researching, I'm going to have him moving around searching for nature sites, I think. Well, I've got the Lizard Shamans now. And the Lizard Shamans have nature as well as astral, so they're doubly efficient at that. So yeah, we'll stick with sages. We'll, we're going to keep recruiting sages for a while. Eventually, we will transition to recruiting mainly shackled ones with a, the occasional oppressor to form ready-made communions. But for now, the double paths on sages are really valuable, and especially the fact that sages can get water too. If we ever want to go underwater, that will be vital. It's not something that we're really considering right now. Over here, of course, this will be done in a turn. We're building the lab. Uh, I love how much money I have as Flegra. I have so much money that I can afford to just be building structures all the time, which is really, really nice. Uh, and we're going to have fully upgraded fortresses very, very quickly. Uh, I'm sorry, I totally lost my words for a second there. Pythium. Pythium has a Palisades here that is being upgraded. Uh, they're fairly extensive. They've, they've expanded all right. They've got, I can see, I think it's, this is 11 provinces of theirs. I assume they own this one and these two. I just assume that. Uh, I can't see how they got here without going through here or here at least. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, they seem to have done all right for themselves. And I wouldn't be surprised if they'd expanded out to, you know, over here and down here somewhere. I don't know what their god is. Pythium. Where is Pythium? Statue of Kirk. God of Order, Lord of Vegetation, the Unsleeping God. They might have taken an Awake Immobile for a blessing or something. Pythium's not great at blesses. Anyway, uh, Minion in Chief is going to also get a turn worth of archers. 
and he will add that to his stack of archers and then go down here. I was a little bit skeptical about heavy infantry and crossbowmen, but I think they can take it. Uh, and I think taking this province would rightfully be seen by Pythium as an immediate declaration of war, which is not what I want at the moment. I will want that at some point, but not right now. Taking gold crags would also be a decent idea, but for right now I don't need it, um, because I don't need resources that badly. I'll probably take it... After I take Abi, I'll sandwich gold crags between this fort and that fort. And that will be fine. Uh, Hippolytus over here is capturing slaves. Idiocrates is capturing slaves. Aristotle is moving over here to where this fortress is going up to capture slaves. And we'll use those troops to stage against Marignan. Down here, I'm actually not taking any provinces this turn. The early expansion phase is kind of slowing down. What I'm doing here is I'm recruiting a few more helots and I'm waiting for my army here to catch up. I'll transfer my troops to Pyrus, uh, and I will send Fanon back to pick up soldiers from this fort. That force will take this province, which the AI will see as a declaration of war. That should be alright, because crossbowmen, pikeneers, swordsmen, and flagellants, probably not too, too dangerous. Um, King of Astral Fires, Lord of the Heavenly Fires, King of Blood. Uh, taking blood especially doubtless means that he's taken a pretty heavy bless on his flagellants, but flagellants are very fragile. So as long as they're cutting through helots instead of anybody valuable, they won't be paying for themselves. Um, should be fine. The only real risk is if he's taken the death explosion blessing, which is kind of a meme with flagellants, uh, which means they explode when they die. And that does mean with flagellants, since they tend to die a lot, you get a lot of explosions. But I'm not too, too worried about it. Uh, after that, I will put Marignan itself under siege at some point. It does have 750 wall integrity, so it's going to be a little while before I can do that effectively. Um, it is nice that I'm actually building temples for once. It gives me more dominion spread chances and all that, so I can keep pushing my dominion just in case Ermor or somebody gets a bit stroppy with the dominions. You can see that Thacia has been taking a number of provinces along the coast, which is fine. Those are the provinces that he has to take in order to expand, after all. Um, I'm not sure how far he can go over here. He's kind of impinging on what would have been Marignanese territory in order to get some land, which I can't blame him for once again. But I think I'm in a pretty solid position, to be honest. I think I'm doing quite well. And uh, I've got enough scout recruitment now that my scouts are starting to uh, spread across the land, because I'm recruiting scouts in, I believe, three places. There, there, and there. Well, these are Bakemono chiefs, technically, but they're functioning as scouts. So I'm in a pretty good place. Gem-wise, I'm also in a pretty good place, because my Earth, Death, and Fire income are all pretty decent. And I also have one Water Gem per turn, which is really, really nice. I want some air and some nature income as quickly as I can. So this guy is probably going to spend his life running around searching. And once I get some lizards, they are going to spend their lives running around searching. At some point, I will pause, bring Hulk Smash back to a fort, and forge... If I can get the nature gems, I'll forge a Thistle Mace or two to um, buff up my one nature troops to two nature, which is much more efficient at site searching, so that they can go around and find all the level two sites. But that is for the future for now. Like I said, this turn, no provinces. Next turn should be three provinces. Unless there's a Pythium army. Yeah, next turn should be three provinces. Because the only place he could take this province from would be here or here. And he's shown no inclination of wanting to attack those barbarians yet. So, uh, that's the turn. And I'll see you in turn 13. Alright, turn 13 of honor. And what a turn it was. This was a good one. Um, so... If we look at my messages, I finished upgrading the fortress in Nam. I finished constructing the Palisades in Forbidden Fortress and started upgrading it. And I found a magic site in Tifia, which was the Jervalan Wall. And the Jervalan Wall gives you a fortress for free, an upgraded one. So I, it's a max level fortress. It's a castle. So I just have a castle now for nothing. I was planning on building a fortress down here anyway, somewhere, and it, uh, I guess it's in Tifia. And what's even better, Tifia, of course, is the province that lets me recruit cataphracts, which are very, very solid heavy cavalry units. They have two attacks, they have the lance charge, they have the hoof, 
So they get these two attacks in sustained combat, and they get this attack additionally when they first charge in. Can only be used once per battle, charge bonus for first strike. So cataphracts are very solid. They do take a lot of recruitment points, but because my slaves take almost no recruitment points, I can recruit three cataphracts and a few archers here every turn, which is fantastic. Cyclops also take almost no recruitment points, so if I needed to, if for some reason I wanted Cyclops, I could recruit several Cyclops here in a turn as well. But as it is, I think we'll just stick with Cataphracts and Archers for now. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't decided what I'm doing with these troops yet. Up here, I'm starting to recruit uh, Shamans, and will be doing so forever. Down here, I don't have any Mages yet. I could recruit Hoburg Priests, which have a 10% chance to be Mages. But, eh. I have enough stealthy units. Now, Pythium did go in and take over Asurian, Isurian. They took a few casualties from the Barbarians, but not many. They lost their only battle vestal, interestingly. But generally, they were just relying on the toughness of their infantry. Principes and Alle Legionnaires and... Not Velites, but... Well, Velites still have 10 defense. I mean, 15 defense. All of Pythium's infantry have very high defense. Uh, Emerald Guard. Mostly it was the Principes that did the work in this battle, I believe. Yeah, you can see they're just advancing in line with the Alle Legionnaires behind with their javelins. And they're basically just going to shower the barbarians with javelins and then let them break on the shields. Yep, there we go. That, uh, that battle vestal got way ahead of herself. And the barbarians come in, they can't really hit these guys with defense skill 15 very effectively with their 11 attack. And they break pretty quickly because barbarian morale is not great. Also, it's, they have their prophet here. Biggest Dickus, the prophet. Yes, what's their blessing? Reinvigoration, penetration bonus, and HP plus one. So that's a minor nature blessing. Why only HP plus one? That's an astral blessing. That's an earth blessing. Like, this is four earth, this is, I think, four astral or five astral. And then that's like two nature. Did they claim a throne or something? What's his heroic ability? Oh, unequaled obesity. Yep, okay, so he has more hit points and more strength. It's not great on a human because it increases encumbrance. It only kicks their hit points up by a little bit. And two extra points of strength is not very valuable on a human. But he has that. So, one second. Has he has he claimed a throne or something? No, nobody's claimed a throne. Huh. Plus one hit point. Probably what that means is... Pythium has a Dormant God. The Dormant Gods are starting to wake up right now. But... Yeah, I, I would think that means that Pythium has a Dormant God who has another Nature Blessing or something. Because 1 HP is only, I think, 1 Nature Bless point. Huh. Interesting. Anyway. Over here, uh, I'm recruiting Sages, of course. And I am sending in my little army of Helots to take over this province, which shouldn't be a problem for them. Up here, Aristotle is actually moving down to Tiffia. Since I have a pre-made fortification, he's going to come down here, pump out infantry right next to the capital of Marignan so that I can take it over. This citadel is, of course, going to be something of a bear to take over, but once I take it, I'll have it. And I'll also have Marignan's capital gem-producing sites, which include a lot of fire. So that will be very, very nice. I'm not still recruiting units here, am I? No? Good. Uh, diplomatically, Facia is complaining about Agartha moving down into his, what he calls his lake down here. Um, fair enough, I'll let them deal with it. Like I said, I don't really want to be involved in that part of the world just yet. Minion-in-Chief. This army, I think, can probably beat Minion-in-Chief's army, because his infantry are not terribly vulnerable to arrows with their big shields and their high protection. 
And they're also not particularly vulnerable to Hoburg Militia, because nobody is particularly vulnerable to Hoburg Militia. That being so, I'm not going to take Copper Woods, because he's about to move down and take Copper Woods. And I don't want to collide. I don't want to give them the impression that I'm an easy target. I'm just going to kind of keep sneaking scouts into his territory, slowly. And I'm going to start producing mages here. I'm going to build a, a lab next turn, and then we'll get that done. Uh, Eris Twaddle, once he gets down here, will spend one turn building a lab, so that I can recruit mages here as well. Back at home base, still recruiting sages. I will probably get another, I will get another tyrant in a couple of turns here. Once uh, all four of my other forts are up and producing mages for research purposes. And then I will, um, then I might actually start recruiting a, an elder cyclops or two. Because elder cyclopses have the resource bonus and the master smith. The resource bonus is honestly irrelevant. Unless I want to be producing Helot Soldiers, which I don't really. Helot Soldiers are not great. Um, Helot Warriors are actually, I think, objectively better because they have the Javelin. So they can throw that as they go into combat and it lets them do a little bit of extra damage before the lines meet. They also have less encumbrance, but Helot Soldiers are like, uh eh. They're like really, really crappy knockoff hoplites. I mean, really, they're not even heavy infantry. Like, literally, independent heavy infantry has better stats than this. So, I don't think I'll ever recruit these guys, really. Uh, I, I can't think of any reason I would want to. When, yeah, they have no advantages. I mean, they have four more points of protection. But... The difference between 9 protection and 13 protection in the Middle Age when it comes to human troops is not great. So I'm just going to leave them be. I'm just going to stick with what I'm doing. Uh, what I actually do want to do over here, instead of Trophimos Sages... Well, I don't need Cyclops, Shepherd, Shamans because I'm about to start getting these guys. So actually I won't do that. The only real reason to have Cyclops, Shepherd, Shamans is to have them summoning Mouflons or to have them running around um, sight-searching for nature. But like I said, I'm going to have these lizards running around sight-searching for nature and astral, so that won't be a problem. So, over here, I have the forces to go in and kill this army. Uh, actually, I probably have enough forces to take on both of their armies. I mean, I've got... 56 Infantry, 7 Giants, and Hulk Smash. Let's put him right down there. Let's move Pyrrhus, or Pyrus over to that side. Put this Archer down there, in case they're shooting at Archers. And yeah, we'll leave Fanon here. Let's take this army and go take Jerib. This province is fairly defendable. Because, well, it's got a fort on it with 500 wall integrity. So it, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, yeah, that fort is... So this can be upgraded to a giant castle. Interesting, I didn't realize I could upgrade my forts another time. Giant Castle, I've been 45 recruitment bonus, commander point bonus 1, uh, okay. It doesn't give me another commander point. If it gave me another commander point, I would absolutely upgrade all of my forts to Giant Castles. But, since it doesn't, it's not worth doing. Yeah, I didn't remember that I could do that. I think I talked about it once in, my, uh, in the single player game, but I hadn't remembered it was an option. But yeah, um, if it gave me a two-point commander bonus like this uh, Citadel gives a two-point commander point bonus. So you can recruit a mage and a half or a mage and a normal commander every turn. Or, you know, three mages in two turns is an option here. But without that, it's not really worth upgrading. I mean, it would give me a few more recruitment points. Like right now I have a 75% recruitment point bonus. If I upgraded it to a giant castle, it would be a 100% recruitment point bonus which would give me, kick me up to like 160 or 170.
but honestly I'm usually not recruitment point limited because my slaves require so few recruitment points. I would only start to become recruitment point limited if I was recruiting a lot of if I was recruiting a gigante warrior everywhere I could, and even there, I think I'd run out of resources first. So, not worth worrying about. So yeah, we'll take that province from Marignan. We'll take this province from the Independence. Turn after that, we'll sandwich the gold crags and take that with uh, infantry from both sides. We'll build a lab here next turn. We'll build a lab here the next turn. Then we'll have five centers all churning out mages. At that point, I'll be able to comfortably turn my capital over to producing nothing but tyrants and elder cyclops without worrying about it. So that's the plan. Uh, moving my scouts out, I don't have good vision on the world still, but I've got decent vision of Pythium, and yeah, Pythium has expanded quite effectively. He's also got a lizard province, which is, you know, fair. And for Pythium, it's not as big a deal, because Pythium already has Astral. So it was a big deal for me, because getting getting those Astral nature lizards means I can sew them into my communions without, um, without having to forge a headband for a Cyclops Shepherd Shaman, so I can get nature in my communions very easily. And I can have nature communion slaves. For Pythium, I don't think it's as important, because Pythium has a lot of communion stuff already. But yeah, they've got quite a chunk of territory. I mean, I think they're as big as I am, if not a little bigger. And I'm... I'm not small. For this part of the, part of the game, I think... If I look at game settings... Uh, no, how big was the map again? I think given the size of the map, I have at this point more than my quote-unquote fair share of provinces. I think the fair share for every individual is like 16 or 17 or something. I have a little over 20. So I'm doing all right. Pythium is also doing well. Like I said, how many do they actually have that I can see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then I imagine they have a couple more of these, so they probably also have 20 provinces. So yeah, I don't necessarily want to go to war with them because their basic troops are a lot better than my basic troops. And so I'm going to need some battle magic before I go in against them. I'm only just about to hit Alteration level 3, which gives me Earth Meld. Uh, because my year zero research is so crap. Actually, no, at level 2 I have Earth Meld. At level 3 I'll get... Uh, numbness and iron skin which is an ex excellent thug spell that my tyrants will need I also get protection for my nature mages so that I can cast bark skin onto squares of my infantry which would be a significant buff uh, casting bark skin on nine protection infantry would kick their protection up to like I don't remember exactly but yeah, the formula has some division involved in it that's a little bit weird, but I think it would kick protection up to about uh, 16 on the body. So it would be about 16 total, which is a significant boost. Uh, I'll want to go up to Alteration 5 to get Wooden Warriors at some point here, so I can be throwing that on people. And of course, Legions of Steel as well would also be a nice, a nice buff. So, that's going to be the turn. I will see you in uh, late spring, turn 14. All right, it is turn 14 in honor. Um, Something weird happened this turn that I've noticed before. It seems like a lot of my orders at some point got canceled. Like, for example, this province, I have set to repeat recruit a Bakemono chief every turn, and no chief was recruited this turn. And this province recruited the scout, though. So, it's weird. Sometimes things happen and sometimes they don't happen, and I'm not entirely certain what determines when something happens. But in any case, well, unlike my research, like, I completed Alteration Level 3, and then the research queue was cleared, and so I researched Conjuration Level 1, which, okay, fair enough. It's not a big waste or anything, but it's just interesting. Um, and it makes me have to 
try and remember what it was that I wanted to get after Alteration Level 3. Uh, if I want to go down the Thug route, Alteration Level 4 is valuable because it will give me Temper Flesh, which is a really good Earth buff. It will also give me Curse of Stones, which is a pretty good combat spell to help my troops out if they can last for a while in combat. However, some Evocation would also be nice for early wars. I'm about to be in an early war, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit here. So I'm going to jump down alter jump down evocation sorry to level four uh, because of my auto communions if i can get a communion set up alteration level four will let me cast thunder strike with my uh, trophimos oppressors and thunder strike is a very very potent spell it will also let me cast blade wind against large numbers of unarmored chaff and it will let me cast acid rain and um uh, Banefire, if I want Banefire. Level 5 would give me Falling Fires and Falling Frost and um, Earthquake and stuff like that, but level 4 will give me decent, decent capabilities. Uh, if I went up to level 5, I could cast Storm, which would let me buff my air magic, but I don't really need to do that immediately. So we're going to run down to level 4. Uh, it won't take long. It's only 107 research points to reach evocation level 2, which will give me lightning bolts. And then from there I can move forward. Up here I am still recruiting sages. I may swap to recruiting shackled mages. It will slow my research, but it will um, it will mean I have slaves available for convenience. But in any case, the most imp more importantly, um, Tianqi anointed a new prophet, which is nice. In Abi, I took over the province, uh, albeit my Helot warriors did retreat. In Jerib, I fought the AI forces of Marignon, and I beat them. Uh, I lost three of my Giganti warriors. That's the first time that's really happened that I've had that many casualties in this game, and it was because of the crossbowmen. I'm not going to watch the whole battle because I'm a little short on time right now, but the crossbowmen, my Gigantes basically held the line against the Flagellants, Pikineers, and Swordsmen killed quite a lot of them and routed them off with the Helot Warriors supporting. The Helot Warriors, however, then also routed and the Gigantes and the Dracon basically charged the crossbows alone. The crossbows got one close range volley which killed all three of the Giganti Warriors that died because they are quite crossbow vulnerable. They're large targets, their protection is not high when a crossbow hits them, their protection is effectively seven, I believe? And so that damage, that 11 damage, um, gets basically 4 damage above and beyond the uh, the DRN. And if it rolls well, it can do quite a lot of damage. And Giganti Warriors have a lot of hit points, so they can tank at long range, but at close range where several bolts hit each one, they do go down. Uh, I lost quite a few of my Helot Warriors as well, but I did kill more of his stuff. Uh, Marinini's Swordsmen are not great troops, they do high damage. They're kind of like Barbarians in that way, but worse than Barbarians. And uh, Pikineers are just not very good in general. Uh, they do have long weapons so they can repel, but since repel got nerfed in the transition from Dominions 4 to Dominions 5, that's not as impressive as it used to be. Uh, Flagellants are their sacreds. They're not great. They can be blessed, and this Marignon does have... I will view the battle real quick just to show you his blessing. This Marignon does have something of a bless. <laughs> I don't remember if I showed it earlier on, so you can see those crossbows starting to do work. But um, their blessing is luck, attack skill plus four, fire resistance, and blood surge. So when the flagellants kill somebody, they become quite impressive. With the uh, even the attack skill plus four only makes their attack skill like mediocre, a little better than absolutely average. Lucky means they have a 75% chance to evade any hit that would otherwise kill them, which does make them last longer. You can kind of see here the uh, the Gigantes and the Helots are forming a line, but the Gigantes are standing there and tanking. Well, one of them, I guess, died right then that I didn't notice. Um, taking a lot of damage, the Dracon kind of gets mucked up. When my infantry retreats and my archers, then the Giants and the Dracon kind of move forward. And you can see here I lose the uh, I lose a couple of gigantes there, and I think yeah those four survived. So yeah, it was the crossbows that basically did it. 
Um, I have a plague in Flegra, which is a problem. I don't quite know how to stop the plague. I think it just has to run its course. I've lost population. I did get some gold from that, so that was nice, but some of my units are getting diseased. It's a problem. I've also got a famine in the Caverns of Gnek. Fortunately, I don't care much about the Caverns of Gnek. It just provides resources. And in Flegra, I also lost some defense, so I actually did spend the money to get that defense back, back up to 25, because I had a ton of money this turn. I had 1,600 at the beginning of the turn. And it's worth it for the extra unrest reduction, in my mind, because I was down to 17. I want at least 20. And 25, uh, it's nice to have 25, and I don't want anyone noticing, before this video goes up, obviously, that my uh, province defense was weaker. I don't know, I just want to have 25 province defense. Over here, I'm building a lab with Aris Twaddle. I've buffed the defense here up to 11. Over here, I'm building a lab with Ialmanos, and then I will site search with him. Ionius is doing fine. Everyone's doing fine here. I'm starting to capture slaves with Hippolytus, so I'm building up more troops. Um, this was interesting. He didn't go south like I had almost anticipated he would. He went north. He took gold crags. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, for one thing, I want gold crags because it is next to Shepherd's Haven, and I want the resources. It provides a lot of resources. And for another thing, another thing, I don't want him having this inroads into my territory. So, I don't know how to get it back without going to war, though. And I don't want to go to war with Pythium right now. And the reason why I don't want to go to war with Pythium is that I'm about to go to war with Phasia. I've been in contact with two other players, Ulm and Agartha. Ulm's over here. And Agartha is down here. And basically, the Phasian player has made an enemy of both of them at this point. Uh, he actually put Ulm's capital under siege, which is, of course, an extremely aggressive move. So they're at war, just outright at war. And Agartha has been taking the underwater provinces down here. And Phasia has been complaining about it loudly on the Discord server, which has not made him friends. He comes across as whiny, and it, uh, it turns people against him. So the three of us have agreed that we're going to get together and we're going to kick Phasia off the mainland and limit him to his island. And in fact, we're also going to invade the island at some point, but probably not immediately. Uh, those deep seas are hard to cross for anything. Um, I don't have troops that can really get underwater except these turtle warriors that I can recruit here. So I am going to start recruiting a couple of turtle warriors. I can also recruit turtle warriors over here, interestingly. But I'm probably not going to be able to keep this province. So I think the best I'll be able to do is probably three turtle warriors a turn. I'll start building them up. And in a couple of turns here, I'm going to get together. And I'm going to kick out this Earth Reader there. I don't know where that Earth Reader came from. He must have been an event. And I'm going to take these provinces as well and possibly put Oak Beach here under siege. This is a castle. This is the upgraded Facian Fort, so it has quite a lot of defense. But I'll be able to build up troops here at the Dravalan Wall very, very rapidly. And some of them will be these cataphracts, which are excellent open field soldiers. So Aris Twaddle's going to build the lab, he's going to search for sites, and then he's going to go to work churning out helots. I am recruiting a fourth tyrant, I've got Hippolytus over here. We'll be just kind of holding the line against Pythium. Uh, I may actually move him down to Shepherd's Haven. Could he get there in one turn? He cannot. Okay, yeah, just capture slaves. Keep recruiting sages. I want Aeonius to move out to start searching for magic sites. This province, the unrest is just biking um, in bright woods so there's something there that is causing unrest I'm not entirely sure what probably a site of some kind or an event that's ongoing there that I don't know about but I am gonna start searching for earth sites I'm also going to start searching for let me see I have 66 research points evocation will take a hundred 
Yeah, I'm also going to start searching for water sites. Because if I'm going to go underwater, I will want water gems. I can't summon sea dogs or crocodiles. Before I get an actual water summon, I have to go up to level... I mean, most water summons have to be summoned underwater, unfortunately. And all the ones that don't have to be are water nature cross paths. Well, sea lions can only be cast underwater. Bog beasts cannot be cast underwater. Cave crabs can only be cast in caves. Uh, I could do that with a with a water cross path. Um, not tyrant. You know what I mean. The the masters, oppressor, a trophimos oppressor. If I got a water cross path oppressor, I could summon cave crabs. I don't know that uh, cave crabs are actually useful. I don't think so. Yeah, other than that, I don't have, I just don't have a way to go underwater like sea dogs. Ugh. Crocodiles. Ugh. I don't think crocodiles can go underwater anyway. I don't think they're amphibious technically. Well, they probably are. Sea dogs definitely are, but water nature cross paths are one I don't have. So, that being so, ooh, going underwater, it's turtle warriors or nothing. Um, before I get up, I have to get up to conjuration level 5 before I get spells that can let me get water summons that don't have to be cast underwater. Uh, so, you know, there's that. And level 5 would also give me water elementals. It'll also give me this Hound of Twilight spell. It has to be cast by tyrants. But the Hounds of Twilight are actually pretty powerful. Um, and they have a big patrol bonus, and they have multiple attacks and all that stuff. So that might be interesting to do later on. Um, Akashic Record is an interesting spell if you have Astral and you have Pearls to spare. It lets you see the, um, the score graphs for another nation. But in any case, we're just doing Evocation for right now. And like I said, I'll summon a few turtle warriors um this province wouldn't be a bad one to fort to be honest and i may do that it will mean i have three forts in a really small area here but that's not a bad thing and if i have the money for it there's no reason to not so next turn i might just have a scout start a fort here probably wouldn't bother putting a lab on it for a little while at least but that would let me pump out those turtle warriors much much more quickly which would be useful for taking that province and for actually getting into the water down here once I've pushed Facia off the mainland. Facia has gone underwater to at least some degree, but he hasn't finished conquering the north side here. Uh, also, I have found another na another neighbor, Solaria. That's Solaria's capital. Solaria is another death nation like Ermor, but they don't have a pop kill domain. They actually can spawn more skeletons. I'm, I'm fighting Solaria in my uh, Skaven Blight single-player game right now, and they're a huge pain because they can sp spam so many undead. But we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. And over here, I have found Tianxi and Nazca. Nazca is like Ashdod. It's one of the re it can be one of the really, really dangerous sacred spamming nations. And so I'm worried about that. That's something that I might have to deal with. Um... In particular, if he decides he wants to come after me, it will be hard to stop. He has a Baphomet. Okay. So his god is a Baphomet. Interesting. And I know he has lots of fire magic, at least six fire magic for that plus four attack. And, and minor fire resistance. I know he has seven fire magic, actually. Um, and... 7 fire magic, 4 blood from the blood surge. And then, I forget what the rest was, but I'll look it up. In any case, lots of fire, lots of blood. Not unexpected from Marnion, although Middle Age typically doesn't have a lot of blood. I mean, the nation doesn't have any blood. So, it's not entirely usual for, uh, for them to have blood on their pretender. But yeah, I think we're in a really good place right now. And uh, I will strive to remain in that place. 
Uh, not going to go to war with Pythium. Going to see if we can make a non-aggression pact. If not, I am, of course, still going to guard my borders because I don't know these people like I know the people in the um, Machaka game. And so I can't trust that they will keep non-aggression pacts. Great Grey Shrike, I can trust he will keep a non-aggression pact. Uh, I've played with him before, I know he will, so that's a secure flank until he tells me the non-aggression pact is off. This is not necessarily a secure flank. This is not a secure flank. This is definitely not a secure flank. Uh, Facia is going to be a huge problem. And I anticipate that I am going to suffer a lot of reading in kicking him off. In, in, in kicking him out. Who's moving there? Oh, Cadmos, that's right. Um, I've got 21 helots here right now. Gonna hold off on actually moving them out. I'm bringing uh, this extra Trophimos commander that I created here back in this direction. He'll pick those troops up and then move south. So one, two, pick up troops, three. In four turns, I'll hit Digmore. And I should be able to just throw him out. He's built a temple there. He's probably building a fort. I may have to throw him out earlier. Uh, he's recruited Victor's villains. Those aren't impressive. The shipwreckers. Oh, those are amphibious, aren't they? Dagon. I don't have any money left right now to hire people. Uh, Fenag. Move down there. I'm thinking he's building a fort right now. And I would like to kick him out before he does that. I don't want him to build a fort here. So, we're gonna have to go in kinda sharpish. Which is unfortunate. It's bad timing because I'm also, of course, fighting... Marignon now. So this army just needs to pull back. Um, I think. I hate to do it because Jerob is actually a really good province. But... Mainly Lion Tribe Archers. Well, I'm definitely not scared of Lion Tribe Archers. But this army just does not have the manpower. Yeah, I can't hold this province. I've got to fall back. I'm not even going to put any defense in it. Next turn. I have more archers and more cataphracts, but I won't really have more infantry. I need Fenag for the infantry. I need to move Fenag over here. At Obarek with his 21 units. Yeah, let's get Obarek moved down here so he's in position. Okay. Next turn, I'm going to kick the defense on my coastal provinces up higher in order to try to prevent raiding. And with minion in chief, yeah, 84 units. Let's go into Copper Woods. Let's do it. Let's take it before somebody else does. Um, we'll take Copper Woods. If Pythium wants that, then I can make a claim on Copper Woods. And that is uncrossable because that's River. So it's only this province that I'll have to worry about. So we'll kind of have our separate spheres of influence there. Uh, what happened in Wicker Woods? Ah. Pythium sent in a little expeditionary force and lost. Interesting. With their, was that their profit? No, just a Legatus Legionis. The Indies have a priest, amusingly. The Indies have a priest with a rabbit foot charm. Okay. There seems to be a lot more independence with just random items in this game that I'm used to, which is pretty cool. You can see the archers are doing very little to these Romans, but the infantry are just going to swarm them because there's so many. Yeah. The, uh, the heavy infantry is tough enough to swarm them down. 
Uh, it looks like the archers got some uh, friendly fire on the militia, though. But yeah, so the forces of Pythium were chased out. And, uh... No, the archers didn't get any kills. Interesting, so... 27 dead. 13 kills. Oh, oh, when independents rout, they die. That must be what it is. Yeah, all the militia routed, and so they... The militia routed, so they almost all died. Okay, interesting. So Pythium attacked from this direction into Wicker Woods and lost. So I'm going to take Copper Woods, and then I might just take Wicker Woods. Because it doesn't look like Solaria has any troops there. So, yeah. That might be two free uh, forest provinces for me. Nice. So, uh, in other plans, I don't think I have any other plans. I think those are all the plans I have. So I am taking one independent province. Uh, Gold Crags, that's a mercenary group. That is the Black Fists. And that's most of what he's got. So, when that goes away, this province would be pretty vulnerable. But I, like I said, I don't really want to get into a war with Pythium right now. Pythium has recruited a bunch of Theurg Communicants, which are the special unit that Pythium can recruit that can communion, be communion slaves. So he's got very significant communion power already available. And if he's been doing research, he's ahead of me, because my research is still bad. Uh, I have a lot of forts now, and I'll have a lot of labs up really, really soon. So my research is getting better, and is going to get better very, very rapidly. Because, like, I've got mages coming out of this province. I'm going to have mages coming out of this province next turn. I'm going to have mages coming out of this province next turn. Two turns from now, I'll have mages coming out of this province. I've already got mages coming out of this province. So I'll have them coming out at double speed pretty quickly. So I'm about to balloon into making a lot of mages. Up to turn... On turn 17, I should produce five mages. Well, four, and then I'll probably still be working on tyrants, because my capital is going to produce tyrants and elder cyclops pretty much exclusively from now on, unless I have a really good reason to change. But, in general, I'm going to have a lot of mages pretty soon, and my research is going to start spiking very, very quickly. Uh, at some point, if I, get some, if I ever get some darn air income, I will pause in my research to grab construction 2 and start churning out air quills to buff my research even higher. But that is for another day and for another turn. Uh, I will see you in turn 15. Take care until then. Alright, it's turn 15 of honor. Uh, we didn't actually take any provinces this turn because uh, in Copperwoods we lost. Yeah, just lost outright. Um, I knew Hoburg militias were bad. I didn't recall them that they were quite that bad. Uh, these light infantry freaking cleaved through me. Uh, I mean, my infantry corps was light. It was weak. And it was majority Hoburg militias, and that really let me down. It was the morale. Um, they were all in a unit together. And because of the way morale mechanics work when the Hoburg Militia, which were the, the Hoburg Militia were the majority of the unit, and so dragged morale down even below what Helot Warriors would have been. The Helot Warriors were, I think, 11, uh, with the the bonus from my profit, and the Hoburg Militias were still only 7 or 8. So that dragged the squad down. They routed pretty much on contact, not exactly, and got chased down by the Light Infantry. And in the process of chasing them down, uh, my archers held for a while and actually did score some kills, but they ran, as did my prophet, and my prophet was actually caught, because he only has combat speed 9. He was caught by the light infantry, surrounded, and killed. So that's a problem. Um, it's not a huge problem. I missed out on a province. Now that said, I might have, I probably would have lost it anyway, because Pythium did move in this turn with 20 more Principes, so probably would have lost the province immediately thereafter, no matter what. And losing my profit isn't really a big deal, because I was planning to get him killed off sometime soon anyway. Uh, this is one of the things, a minor thing about Flegra. Because their units are so cheap, they don't pay much upkeep. You can see I'm still only paying 300 upkeep per turn, 
despite having five forts now churning out units. And they are all churning out units, by the way. I'm recruiting a ton of units here. I'm recruiting units here. Maxed out, I'm recruiting units here. Maxed out to the max of my resources. I've maxed out on units here. And I've maxed out... I haven't maxed out on units here. This is the only place I haven't. I'm only recruiting a few infantry. But I am recruiting mages in all five provinces. In any case, um, your prophet pays no upkeep because he's the prophet and that's a special thing about prophets. So as Flegra, one of the few, the few units, commanders, whatever, that actually pay a lot of upkeep are Flegra and Tyrants. They pay 252 gold per year, which works out to like a little more than 20 per turn, 21 per turn, I think. Um, saving that 21 gold per turn, I mean, that's enough to support 84 helots. It's not a ton of money, but it is some money. And so eventually I want to make a tyrant my prophet. Uh, of course, with a Trophimos commander as my prophet, that wasn't going to happen. And Trophimos commanders only pay uh, 60 gold per year in upkeep. Uh, so I got he died. That's fine. I don't really mind. And I am going to make a tyrant my prophet once that ticks over. I'm recruiting another tyrant this turn. I'm getting a few more giants and a whole bunch more helots. We are moving troops down in this direction because we're going to be going to war with Phasia pretty soon here. Um, they're building a fort in this province, and they've already got a fort in this province. Uh, they have been holding Ulm under siege, and Ulm, I think, is down. I think this is Ulm's capital right there. So Phasia is actually being quite aggressive. It looks like they have not gotten much, if any, territory on this side of the map. That's where Ermor is, or possibly was. He's been attacked and basically beaten up on, as far as I understand. So I don't really have to worry about Ermor. Uh, in other world news, Nazca has also been set to AI. So Marignon is AI, Nazca is AI. This whole section of the map is pretty much free game so long as you can beat the AI, which isn't hard. Uh, my goal, I don't particularly need to expand forcibly into this area much, but I do have, I need to put a point of defense there, my goal is to take Marignon itself. It's a fort with a lot of wall integrity, so it'll take a long time to siege down, but it'll give me a lot of fire gems, and it will give me a, a very secure and already developed recruitment province. So definitely going to do that. Um, This early game has been pretty lucky for me. I mean, I got the Jervalin Wall, which is always nice. I got lizards, which are great. Um. And I managed to claim pretty much everything I wanted. I mean, I got the whole area that I wanted. I could have, I m almost wanted this province, but honestly, honestly, it's okay not to have. This is still kind of a blocker for uh, Vanheim. I didn't get gold crags, which is unfortunate, and I want gold crags, and I think I will eventually end up going to war with Pythium over gold crags. Um, I mean, over the world, of course, but approximately over gold crags. But that's going to have to wait until after I deal with Phasia. We've got several players agreed to line up on Phasia. Now, it sounds like, from the way people have described it, I'm going to have to be doing most of the heavy lifting in the initial stages, which I'm not a big fan of. But it's something I can do. Up here, I'm recruiting for one more turn. I already have uh, six cataphracts. I'll get a seventh, plus a whole bunch more uh, Helot dudes and one giant to add to the four giants I already have here, which have experienced up a little bit and so become significantly tougher with their experience bonuses. So we're going to split up, and from this province we're going to take both of those provinces, certainly. From this province we're going to take that province. Um, this will probably be next turn. Next turn is when I'm thinking this will happen, and I'm going to let Ulm know. Uh, Ulm, incidentally, sent me two main gouches of parrying. Um, which are items that give you a big defense buff, as well as a small attack buff, and they do decent damage. So, I've given them both to Arist Waddle here, for now. It kicks his defense up to 23, which is very, very respectable. And that alone almost makes him thuggable. Since I have Alteration 3, he can cast Iron Skin, which kicks his protection up into the 20s. When he goes Berserk, his defense will drop, but still be quite high because of the main gauches of parrying and his protection will go up by another 5 points. So with all of that, um, that makes a Tyrant a decent early game thug. Not a great one still, and still somewhat vulnerable, 
but he's mainly vulnerable to magic or to certain high damage units, and there aren't all that many of those out there at this stage of the game. So I'll be happy to use him in combat is basically what I'm saying. I'm waiting to see what random this tyrant gets. I'm hoping it's... I'm hoping it's anything but fire, because my tyrants so far... I mean, Hippolytus got air, which is nice, but I'm, I'm hoping for a death. I definitely need a two-death uh, tyrant somewhere. I need a couple of them. The two-death ones are the ones that are easiest to thug in the late game, because they can cast Soul Vortex. But uh, yeah, I'm moving this lizard out to start sight searching. My first two or three lizards are all going to be sight searchers. I'm still recruiting the tyrant here. I'm recruiting sages in my other three provinces. Uh, I'm not focusing on shackled mages and communions yet. I will have to switch over to that sometime fairly soon. Research-wise, I hit evocation level 1 this turn. You can see my research speed is already climbing fairly rapidly and will climb much more rapidly. Uh, it should go up by like... Uh, close to 40 points this turn. It, in fact, I think it will go up by over 40 points this turn, just from the three, um, the three guys I'm recruiting. So, I'll hit Evocation level 2 next turn. Uh, the turn after that, it'll probably take two turns for me to hit Evocation level 3, and then level 4. So in about half a year, I should have Evocation level 4. After that, I am definitely going to go down Construction, because I need to hit Construction level 4 pretty rapidly. I also need to grab alteration level 4. So those 444 four, four will kind of be my initial plan. After that, I will definitely be in wars. And I will want strength of giants as well as to back up my legions of steel as basic buffs for my troops. Um, ideally, before I get into a really, really serious war, I will hit... Uh, alteration level 5 to get Wooden Warriors and Maws of the Earth, as well as Incinerate, which is a kind of a cool spell, but it's single target, so it's really only useful against one guy. But Maws of the Earth is an excellent combat spell against uh, infantry, and Wooden Warriors, of course, is a fantastic buff. So getting those two before I get into a really serious knockdown drag out war that threatens my survival as a nation would be important. Uh, the easy access to lizard communicants is going to be a godsend, I tell ya. Uh, like I said, I'm not going after Pythium immediately. Uh, we're leaving that for a little bit later. That might be a bad decision, but I don't know. Pythium can do the communion thing even better than I can because they have com the Theor communicants, the recruitable units that serve as communion slaves. And their infantry is very solid. The infantry is why I'm not going after them early, because my infantry are crap. And their infantry will be able to hold off more than their own numbers in my infantry. So I don't really want to get into a slap fight with them at this point when I don't have much magic. Uh, even evocation level 3 would help, because with evocation level 3, my air random sages can spam lightning bolts, and I can quickly form miniature communions that can throw lightning bolts for a very long time. But really, I want to get Evocation level 4 for Thunderstrike. And with Thunderstrike, I'll be able to chew through large quantities of enemy infantry pretty quickly once I have communions up and running. So like, a turn or two of Sage recruitment here, and then I'm gonna switch over to recruiting Shackled Mages, at least on this side, both to save money and to uh, start building up communion slaves. Which reminds me, you need to patrol, and you should uh, search for magic sites. Oh, also, I figured out why I'm not recruiting Bakamono Chiefs here. It's because this province has zero resources. Yeah, because that, uh, that random event that fired over here that reduced resources, it reduced them to zero. And since Bakamono Chiefs require 12 resources, I can never recruit a Bakamono Chief here. In fact, I can never recruit anything here unless it gets resources back somehow. So this province is kind of a waste in terms of recruitment purposes, but at least I do have my two scout provinces. I am recruiting turtle warriors here very, very slowly because I don't have a fort, but they'll build up over time, and so eventually I'll be able to go underwater. More realistically, in order to go underwater, I'm going to need construction to build items that give me water breathing, 
and so I'm I'm working on that. This guy is searching for earth sites up here. Uh, of course, I'm searching with lizards. Uh, my next tyrant is going to be a site searcher as well. If he gets a good random, if he gets another, if it's another four fire dude, I I, I may just send him off to spam slaves. I've got slaves there. I've got slaves over here. Aristotle is searching, incidentally, for one turn. Maybe I can pick up another death site or something. I don't know. Or um, an earth or fire site would be nice as well. Uh, Hulk Smash is researching because I don't have anything else better for him to do right at the moment. I mean, he could go site search, but I want him to be here next turn. So, what I'm hoping is that I'll be able to catch this fort before it's constructed. I don't want to go in this turn. I feel like that would be precipitous, and it would leave me open for, like, AI Marignan to come trolling in to, uh, to ruin my jams. So, we're gonna, we're just gonna hold off for now. I definitely do want to hang on to Jared, but I'm not stressing about it. If it's taken, it's taken, that's fine. So that's gonna be the turn, and it's also gonna be the video. So strategy-wise, Facia is our first target. Uh, Pythium might be our next target, but it'll kind of depend on what happens. An alternative would be to go after Shinuyama, because Shinuyama is pretty weak early on. Their Bakemono, Sh their Bakemono um, sorcerers are good mages, but their troops are fairly garbage. He has sages. He has sage recruitment. Um, and I think it must be here in Giffa, because there's no other reason he would have two sages just sitting there. That means he's building a fort there. Uh, I want those sages. I want them. Uh, I definitely, definitely want them. Kickstarting my research would be fantastic. So, Facia, yes. We're going to take Facia's provinces and drive them back in concert with Ulm and Agartha. And then... Possibly Shinuyama. Because keeping Shinuyama down and preventing them from getting much research is valuable. And keeping Great Grey Shrike down and preventing him from getting much research is also valuable. So, yeah. Probably that. Pythium... Yeah, Pythium can do things, but Pythium is also kind of in a in a neighborhood over here. Like, they're not... they've got their own problems to worry about, so I don't think they'll be trying to fight their way past my two forts. Like, this is a very well-defended border. Pythium cannot really do, like, elf tricks where they go invisible and shank you. Vanheim can. So there's that to consider. But, um... We'll burn that bridge when we come to it. For now, I'm thinking... Facia... Shinuyama, um, and of course, Marignan's capital. I am still going to be taking that. I'll have to build up the forces over here to do that, but since I can build up forces so rapidly, it shouldn't be too, too much of a problem. If I get a tyrant in both of these forts pumping out infantry, and I'm recruiting infantry as well, I mean, I can recruit 10 to 15 units or more in each fort. Uh, more in this fort, because this fort has ridiculous resources. Huge resources. Why does it have such huge resources? I don't even have every province around it. Well, okay, so this province just has ridiculous resources, which is great. So I can pump out... I could literally recruit 40 infantry per turn out of this province with counting a, um, counting a guy capturing slaves. More if I used archers, because they require fewer resources. Yeah, I could get... Uh, I could get like 30 some odd archers or 40 some odd. I could get 40 some odd archers plus 10 to 15 infantry per turn out of this place. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, and I wouldn't even hit my recruitment point cap because they cost like no recruitment points. Or, of course, alternatively, I can keep churning out cataphracts, which would be pretty neat. So, in any case, uh, I've got lots of production down here. I can add the production here to that and just swarm troops in this direction. And then I'll put another fort up somewhere up here in the next few turns, like Urban. Maybe I'll just put a fort here. It only has 65 recruitment points. I'll put a fort here. It's got good resources and lots of recruitment points and a high population. So yeah, put a fort there. 
and then I'll swarm northward as well. Okay, so I will see you all in the next video.